Hello, buddy, and welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Well, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Now, guys, we have another guest here today. Now, Caleb, isn't it? Caleb. Caleb is my name, yeah. Oh, thank fuck I got that right. Re- Caleb, <laughs> man, what's the story, man? So please introduce yourself Sorry, to Anthony. people that don't know who you are. Hello there, Anthony. My name is Caleb Ballantyne. Um, pretty unusual name. I'm from Cabra, Dublin 7. Lived here my entire life. I'm 24 at the moment. Um, I'm a actor, I suppose. I'm a writer. Mm. I'm into arts. I'm into many different things. And mostly, um, I like talking. I can talk about pretty much anything. Good, good. I'd, I'd be known as a bullshitter because I can't shut the fuck up talking. I'll talk about anything myself. So um, I think for the likes of, the, uh, for the likes of me, you... Um, being creative people and wanting to do some like multiple things, like as an acting or script writing, you need to be like a like a bullshit. You need to talk a lot of shit. You need to be able to. Talk There's for a ages. certain gift to the gab that's required. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, you know, Dublin has a kind of a history of that and a culture of we're um, a very lyrical people. You know, mm. yeah. a lot of storytelling in Irish uh, history and. It's kind of the way we're always hanging out in pubs. Hmm. Yeah, that's 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 true. I wouldn't be a pub person now myself. I fucking like I won't drink. So some even people say to me, "Are you even Irish?" I'm like, "Listen, man, I'm fucking Irish." But uh, I want to I want to talk about yourself as well. That you're saying that you're an actor. So when did that all start coming about? When did you start getting interested in that? Um. Well, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I was interested in it from the time I was a pretty young kid. I mean. About the age of seven or eight, I would have been interested in acting then. Mm. I always loved watching movies. And actually, my mother would play around a bit with acting as well. when She was mm. about my age at the time. So mm. I remember her being in plays. And um, I always just knew that it was a thing that was possible. That it was always considered an option. Yeah. And then when I was about, well, around 19, I guess I decided that it was time for me to do it. Yeah, it took it took it took from seven the, like from the likes of the seven or eight years of age. Did you do any theater? Did you do any plays or anything in school or anything like that? Did you edit, did you ever audition for stuff? Um, well, the secondary school I went to didn't really have many plays. The primary school, um, yeah, I was in a play, but I had like one line. You yeah. know, it was one of those. Now that one line ended up getting a really huge laugh from the audience. Oh, good, good, um, especially in rehearsal. Yeah, can we can well, we can we can we talk about that then? Can we what what was the play, and what were you and what was your line? We were doing a play of um, Snow White hmm. when we were in second class. Would have been about eight years old, and I um, I was a narrator, so I had hmm. one line of like exposition. Hmm. <clears throat> And I was walking on to introduce some uh, princess character. Um, Her name was Princess Sophie. I can't remember what relevance she had to the story. But basically, um, I was told to walk on and say the words, just then, Princess Sophia burst through the door. Yeah. And um, the director kind of wanted me to uh, (laughs) kind of like sigh and swoon almost as if mm. I was uh, I had a massive crush on Princess Sophia and just yeah. saying her name made me lightheaded and mm. um, you know that I could barely control myself mm. so I went on and I went just then the king's daughter Princess Sophia oh, yeah. burst <laughs> the door and um, <laughs> you know I did that, but I, I was like probably a hundred times more extreme with it. I did it, yeah. you know, yeah. I did it with real I'd say, for, I'd say for adults as well, hearing them noises going, oh, like that, you, you know, way we <laughs> are. And we, we think more, it's like that dirty little horn dog and fucking Princess yeah, Sophia. And eight years old, I wasn't really aware of the yeah. sort of orgasmic nature of the yeah. sound. Of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it could have, you know, could have been. I mean, that could have got the laugh. That the, all the adults and you know, oh, what, that's what, what we know. So people be like, "Oh yeah, dirty little bastard." Um, but yeah, fucking hell, that's that's good then that you even experience because even people that want to be actors and there's, I'm, I, I've talked to filmmakers and actors on these podcasts, and 
uh, a few of them um, were saying that they never even got started until they're teenagers. So it's good that you got an interest when you were young. But what was it that sparked it? Was there a certain film that sparked it? Or what was what it that you saw that sparked it going, shit, I want to do this? A certain film, you say? Yeah. Have you ever seen Chaplin? With Robert Downey Jr., I, it's a movie. No, 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 no. I know of it. I know, I know the Chaplin fellow, but I've I've never seen the actual film. No. Well, Charlie Chaplin was, you know, for yeah, a bit yeah. of background. Can, he yeah, was, go on, give a bit of background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was the biggest. Um, well, the first big movie star, I suppose. Way maybe one of the first. Certainly the most well remembered. Hmm. He was massive. About uh, seventy or eighty, even a hundred years ago. Hmm. So. They made a movie about him in the early 90s. Robert Downey Jr. played him. And, you know, he was making, uh, Chaplin was making silent films. And he was part of the first generation because cameras were like brand new. Mm. So he was part of one of the first generation of uh, actors. And he was hilarious. His movies actually are still appreciated today. And I was watching one about three weeks ago, yeah. the cinephile that I am. Mm. And I was. Um, Amused at how funny and how entertaining they still are, mm. even though they're a hundred years old. Yeah. And Robert Downey Jr. played this character, and it just looked like so much fun mm. to um, get in front of a camera and just do goofy shit. Mm. And to well, I suppose he became very famous and uh, wealthy as well. Mm. And um, maybe that had a bit to do with it, you know. He was a genius, There's, though, wasn't he? He was a genius. Oh, he was a massive genius. Yeah. He was a genius. He was a visionary. Yeah. And, you know, he grew up doing vaudeville. So the first time he was um, on a stage, now, a lot of people, when they're eight, and nine years old, they're doing like school nativity plays and stuff. But mm. him at the age of eight years old, because when he was a kid in the 1890s, there were no child labor laws, you know? Mm. Mm. So they would just bring him into massive theaters packed out. And um, he, sing a song or do so he was like an understudy for uh, a theater troupe for a long time mm. so he grew up doing this he never had any other job he never knew anything did yeah i don't know if in those days he would have really had much formal schooling actually he was as a kid he was in and out of like um workhouses and sort of children's prisons and things mm. at a different time yeah so um i guess you know he had no other choice but to uh, get really, really good at mm. what he was doing. And he perfected it as well, man, because literally, um, I, the first ever black and whites I've ever seen with comedy wasn't Charlie Chaplin, it was Laurel and Hardy. And I fucking love them. They're so funny. I remember the first ever one I showed, my dad came in, he got the volume box set, it was volume one to 21, and it's on 21. And it's it's genius how they done it for back then as well, is that, um, it'd be Laurel and Hardy and they're minding their kids but it's Laurel and Hardy as kids and they, they kind of shrink them make them smaller and it's, it's the stuff they do it's so it looks so simple but it's the way they done it it's real uh, goofy humour yeah, isn't it yeah really funny and I remember from that I went oh my god who it is I have a picture like I literally like one of these here but it's a proper picture out there in my sitting room of Laurel and Hardy and they're up on the wall and it's from one of the sketches where they're working on so I, 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 I fucking love them like they're so good and it's mad the way people like that from like Charlie Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy and so like people from way back then that people like us and I know there's a lot more out there probably someone watching now that still still admires them do you get me still admires what they've done and how I'm one of those so. people very much yeah. yeah you know a lot of the time I think that um people who want to do something uh, in show business, right? They want to do something creative. Yeah. Um, we're all influenced by the media that we see every day. Mm. And sometimes like, you know, when the Beatles first came out, there was about 80 bands that sounded like the Beatles, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They all wanted to be the flavor of the month or something. They were all looking towards the trend at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, the great thing about how now we have the internet and stuff, we have YouTube, that gives us access to lots of things that they're not really shown on TV. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we can um, choose to just zero in on these niche interests that society at large kind of leaves behind. But mm. there's always the little core fan base that are still watching mm. Laurel and Hardy, mm. Three Stooges. 
and um even even other stuff than that yeah weirder yeah. it's 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 i do feel bad for man as you said that it, we have so much more access now and uh like the amount of people we can see now the amount of people that are trying to become something and we have people like fucking katashi what's his name tashi six nine or something oh Eshi. yeah yeah i've only ever seen it written down i don't know how to say it i fucking jesus christ i that's someone that kids look up to that's someone that kids like look and go i want to be like that and that is fucking mental but for me and you we'd probably look at the likes of film films and actors and so on and go i want to be like that that's what i want to be but we also have to take into account that these are characters these are not what these people are like to get me maybe they pursue or betray some of them in themselves it's like uh, i was on a podcast recently and they were um it was all about film and uh, a friend of mine marcus he was talking about we were talking about the raging bull and we were, he was saying that sometimes uh, when robert de niro was doing the raging bull the reason why he wanted to take the role is because he could see himself in the character the main character in it. and it was it was it was mad it was it was mental um it, it, he's really good and um, if anybody um wants to watch that it's nostalgia whores uh, i'll leave a link down in the description below please go check that out um but yeah but for the likes of yourself when you got into the teenage years then um was it difficult um trying to get like into short films and stuff like that or even trying to get yourself out there you know what yes i know um i guess by the time i started doing it I had known a lot of people because don't forget I said earlier on my mother mm. was interested in acting as well and continued to do it off and on in um, various capacities up until very recently. Mm. Um, in some ways, you know, when you're into acting, you never really give it up. You know? mm. no. So she knew a bunch of people that she had made a film with. I was about 16 and she made a short film with a bunch of people. And then a couple of years later, she was still hanging out with them and going to uh, collectives mm. and these massive groups where people would just get together and make films um, because they had the interest. Mm. And I heard about that group from her, so I started going. So there's two generations of the one family going to the same thing. Yeah. And we've never been in a film project together, but I've talked, we've talked about it a bit and we wouldn't rule it out because mm. after all, we both have similar interests and it would be kind of a, a funny little thing to do it sounds it sounds it sounds like um yourself and your ma have a really good relationship a strong relationship you know and i think that's very important well and I, I still live with her when i'm 24 i'm so, clear yeah. i'm 24 i only moved out of my ma's house last year and i'm right because rent is expensive yeah rent rent is expensive here it's it's all right i can afford it I'm on social welfare and I can afford it. So that's all I'd say on online. I'll tell you after, but um, that's all I can say online. But um, yeah, I was, I only moved out a year ago, man. And it's a little small granny flat to a side of a house. That's 15 minutes away from me, mom and dad, because I can't imagine right now of me moving somewhere else. Cause I just, you just can't, there's a touchness there and you, yeah, I'm ready to move out, but I'm not ready to actually go to like Australia and live in Australia or live somewhere far because I don't. I don't. It'd be a bit. Of, it'd be a bit in at the deep end, I suppose. Yeah, do you get me? And it's like that. But I was I was trying for about a year or two before I got this place. You get me? So um, for people out there and even yourself, man, that if you're if you're if you're thinking that oh, I'm 24 and I'm sitting at home and I still live at home, don't worry, man. Trust me, stay at home as long as you can. Because once you're fucking out in the real world and you're out here, when you have bills to pay, you have fucking this. I, I never had to worry about getting toilet roll. Ever. Never had to worry about that. I'd wipe me arse. Every time I went in to wipe me arse, it was there. And now I'm like, shit, man, I have no toilet roll. What am I going to do? I have to go in the shower. That's all I had to fucking do. Whoa. Well, I'm telling you now, and this podcast about truth and facts, so I don't give a shit if anybody judges me. <laughs> I know for a fact the amount of people out there that didn't have toilet roll, didn't know it, so he goes, right, this is a shower job. They're going in doing the shower job. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you know, that's <laughs> another reason why it pays to have a good relationship with your parents. Yeah, exactly. You won't have to worry about... Wiping your ass in the shower, you know. But but it also comes from um. It also we get to a stage where we have to be independent. You know, we have to go out and do things ourselves, and even if they're small tasks and so. And um, 
Yeah, man. So just, just don't don't worry about that anyway. If you're if you are worrying about oh, twenty four still at home and so like that. When are you when are you twenty fifth? Oh, thanks. Um, I'm twenty five in August this year. August. I'm July. I'm July. Right. Yeah, July and, and then uh, your birthday. You'll be the same. It's handy because you never, as a kid, you never had to go to school on your birthday. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'll be. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's good. Um, right. Sorry, I'm getting off subject here, but uh. Right, for the likes of your acting and stuff like that as well, is is there any feature films that you've been in or been a part of now since you pursued this? <laughs> yeah, my credits, my name was in the credits of a feature film that came out a couple of months ago. Mm. Um, I wasn't an actor in it. I was a, I was a, a sound operative. Mm. They just needed someone to hold a microphone. Yeah. Hold okay. the boom. So uh, I did that. Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't. I don't limit myself. I like to go around and do a bit of everything behind the scenes and mm. in front of the camera as well. Mm. It's just, um, it's just fun to be involved because there's nothing like just hanging out in a big room full of actors and directors, yeah. people that have the same interests. Yeah, yeah, I find them to be really interesting people, and mm. uh, there's kind of a like you need a certain confidence, and as we said earlier on, a gift to the gab, you know, to yeah, put yourself yeah. out there. Yeah. So it's fun to be around other people like that. Hmm. I think it's very important. I said it so many times in the podcast that um, if you literally surround yourself with positive people and people that are, have the same interests of you, you're only going to like sky high rock. Like you're literally just going to fucking go up there and you're going to be a part of that because you're putting yourself in that position. And whatever you give out, I, I believe this. My, my friend really taught me all this, but whatever you give, give out to the universe, it brings back. And that's you being positive, positive vibes and you going out there and you you going, right, maybe I didn't get this role, but I need to hold this boom mic or I need to hold this for this guy. That could be my gateway in. That could be, I could talk to these people and they'll go, right, you, oh, well, you're a nice guy to have on set. Maybe we can have you on set in another one. Do you get me? And then you can tell them, yeah, well, I'm an actor, so if you need anybody, I don't even mind doing the background or extras. And then they yeah. go, right, do you get me? Like yeah. the likes of that. And and yeah. that can that can happen like um for the likes of that. But um radio so these these podcasts i only try to keep about a half an hour anyway um so um that's the max but sometimes it goes over um and i i don't mean to because i try to just keep them short and simple because i'm like you're not gonna people ain't gonna sit here and listen to someone that is not known if you get me like not a lot of people so and when i mean that i mean myself not yourself myself people ain't gonna click on my channel to go I thought of it myself I've never been in a podcast before so I the amount of virginities I'm taking on podcasts I swear to god <laughs> the amount of them I feel like a pimp <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what were you saying <laughs> Basically, well I just um, I didn't really know what because uh, you know like like you said mm. no one you know I, I'm just some guy so mm. I, I wondered what I might have to say that's so interesting yeah but come here that's what this podcast is about people mm. like me and yourself that have an interest that are creative and they're doing something and that's why when i ask as well um because i asked greg to ask a lot of the people to come on and mm. greg and literally, he sure did he yeah. jesus christ he's the got amount armies of, voice of messages. people now giving What's me a that? call he's got armies of people giving you calls probably. i know it's great though i'm uh, i'm booked up to like the 9th of june so every day till the ninth of June. So it's bloody brilliant. The amount of podcasts I can get out. Um, but he's a man for the networking, Greg. I know. Yeah, he's great. He's a good actor as well. Um, Greg's a really good actor. Um, I've, I've seen never him. Never been in a film with him. Yeah. No, I mean I've been around him a lot, but um, mm. never acted together with him. I've seen. Oh shit! You're Look forward to, to the day. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to push down towards that and see can you even do something because it's even the likes of yourself and if if you if you are not getting short films this is what i done right i was i didn't know where to start so i said fuck it i'm making my own little series and me and my mates went out made our own series i was known in dublin i was known in sligo i was known in westport i was known in them places so from that and it was a comedy series and i made that now into a feature film it's 92 minutes long or 92 pages and the minute this is all over I'm going to, even I'm going to do it now, I'm going to get it, I have a team with me, so we're all going to meet up on Zoom one of the days, and we're going to go over the script, because it's only the first draft, and we're going to go second draft, third draft, and when all this is over, I'm going out to make feature films, because awesome. I, can't, I can't sit around waiting 
for an opportunity. I, I have to make the opportunity. You make opportunities. Yeah, exactly. I have, to make, yeah, I have to make them because you can't sit around and wait on anybody. It's like if you go out with your mates, all right? This is a perfect example. You sit there when you're a kid, you go, boys, you come out and play football. They're like, yeah, 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 we'll be out in a minute. Next of all, you're there about an hour later. You could have been playing football on your own. You could have been practicing your own skills because you were into football. You want to do football. You're waiting around for our people and you shouldn't be waiting around. You should be out doing yourself. If you can write a script, if you have a good imagination, and I know from talking about talking to you, that I, I kind of have a, a sus and a just that you'd be able to sit there and write a script. So if you can sit there and write a script. There is one that I have nearly finished. Yeah, there you go. So stick to it. I know that some days you're probably like, I'm not in the humor for this, but they're the days that you have to. Do you get me? They're the days that you have to go and do it. So don't wait around for the people to come out and kick the ball with you. Do it yourself. Okay. Go out and learn your own skills, man. I swear to God, I'm like a guru. <laughs> but um, yeah, but literally, man, that's my quote. That's my quote today. Don't wait around for, the, for your friends to go kick the ball, man. Go Nobody on. makes you do it. Exactly. You do it yourself. It comes from within. Exactly. Fucking the power within. Right? <laughs> um, but that's, that's, that's what I'd say to you, man. Don't, don't wait around on anybody. Go do it yourself. And then you'll have people. I, I made a short film called The Interview. Um, people liked it. And then I, we, we got a crew together. There's me and six other people. And um, I, I, I started it. And I said to them, listen, um, this short film, because I wrote and directed a short film called The Lotto Ticket. And I said, listen, this film is going to get us a bit noticed. And we done it. And then I have another short film now called The Hitman. That's a comedy that's inspired by Pulp Fiction, the two hitmen out of Pulp Fiction. And um, I held auditions and I put it up. 60 people fucking messaged me and I had 60 people down to audition for me. Now I'm known and 60 Ooh. people wanted to do it and it, it was free. I didn't, wasn't There's paying There's still people out there that want to get involved in the arts somehow. Yeah, exactly. Like at the moment, I mean, maybe it's just the circles I run in, but it seems like everyone I know hmm. um, does, wants to do a bit of acting. They want to play a bit of music. There's always yeah. some sort of... Um, you know, the type of people I want to online. Like that, yeah, me too. They're the type of people. Was it always like this? Like, were other generations? Maybe our generation are just better at actually doing it. I mean, we have doing for a start. Technology is easier to get. Yeah, yeah, I I agree, but I think our I think there's so much. I think there's so much out there right now because of the internet. It's harder for us to get a job or like not a job, but like an acting thing back then. You had to go through people inside that, and you needed to know people. But yeah, yeah, go back. Yeah, again, back then you'd probably have to have a certain look to you and a certain yoke for the roles and so. But um, yeah, as I I'm said, man. More conservative then. Yeah, as as I said, man. Just even if you're not doing anything today or later on this evening, sit down and write that fucking script. Just can just do it. Just do it. There Leave might be a part of it. I'm telling you now, man. Just do it mm. because what else do we have to do? We have what? Doing, what doing nothing. We're sitting here waiting for a fucking bacteria virus to bloody fuck off so we can go back outside and live our lives. So this time is for the likes of ourselves, creative people, is where we fucking thrive because we have nothing else to do. So let's just do what we're best at doing. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into the last... Good man. Ed, I'm going to get into the last segment um, of this now. And I, I say this all the time. I think this is like catchphrase now. It doesn't matter if it's a scientist. I still ask this question. Uh, guys, you know what it is by now. We have this a few times, guys. This is... I don't know what it is. Ghost story. Oh, scary. No guest knows what it is. No one knows what it is. Um, I don't tell any guests uh, because I want to see the reaction. I want to get the, the general reaction. And I have two questions. Can people you. see this or can they only hear it? No, people will see this. This is what you see okay. right now. This is what people will be saying. Okay, all right. It's like, it's like that. Um, so but, you now you can see my reaction yeah <laughs> um, two questions one do you believe in an afterlife or reincarnation oh well um wasn't expecting that yeah do i believe in an afterlife or reincarnation um no it's all right it's grand man no if you don't, it's, yeah that's all right well i want to i yeah. want to believe in an afterlife reincarnation yeah. Maybe, yeah, oh, really fair, kind right? of hard to find evidence, you know. To yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I understand, I understand. And two, is there any ghost stories you can tell, or is there someone you know that probably told you something before? Trust uh, <laughs> 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 um, 
you know, there's a guy I know who could sit here all day and tell you ghost stories. You could do, you should do an episode with this fella just about just ghost, ghost stories. stories. I think I would. You send me, um, send him me away and I'll do it. Whole episode. I was talking to a taxi driver actually once who, um, I was on my way home from a session. I'd had a few drinks and I said something about ghosts. And then the taxi driver was like, oh yeah, you believe in ghosts and that's it. And I was like, well, you know, sure. A good story is a good story. Within five minutes, he was telling me his ghost stories. Oh God. And can you remember yeah. one of them? So he, not really. Well, he believed in, he obviously believed in ghosts. He just, yeah. um, he, he didn't want to say it until someone else had said it first, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, didn't look, he didn't want to look mad. Like, he didn't want to be yeah. like, oh, this other thing's I'm mad. So the weirdest ghost story I ever heard was where someone was alone in their house hmm. and they were uh, walking around from room to room just doing their thing. And it's a pretty big house they live in. And they were, uh, they like put on the kettle or something like that. Hmm. And then they went upstairs to blah, blah, blah. They came back down to the kitchen and there was a cup of tea on the counter fuck made off. with milk, with sugar. A cup of tea had been made. What the fuck? And um, I, when I heard the story, I kind of thought, well, I guess he just made a cup of tea and forgot about it. He was like, no, yeah, yeah. this cup, it was a hot cup of tea. It would have just been poured. And he, uh, like, he'd even said he heard noises from the kitchen when he was upstairs. Some homeless fellow so, coming in to make them tea, and then heard that someone's in the house, so he ran out. Well, <laughs> whoever it was, you know, <laughs> wouldn't you love sometimes for someone to just make you a cup of tea, even you if would, it's a ghost? Yeah. yeah, yeah, even if it's a ghost. <laughs> and it, it's it's if it's I, if I must if I must meet a ghost, I want it to be a helpful ghost like yeah, that. You don't want to bloody be a demon for me. Yeah, but like yourself. Um, what do you think of that story that you were told? Then? Well, you just told, what do you think of that? Oh, what, what do I think? What's your, what's your opinion when they told you that? Were you like, um, you're fucking bullshit? Or were you just like, my oh, that's interesting. My opinion is hilarious. And you know what? I, um, I'm not really one to condemn or disagree with weird shit. Mm. Because a lot of weird shit happens. Yeah. And you don't really believe it until, uh, until it happens to you. you know? mm. Look... My take on it is that they probably just made a cup of tea and forgot, but mm. it's not as much fun to say that. It's more fun to kind of let the legend live on, you know. Yeah, I think I think I think you're right. Um, I think it's just more fun if if we can have that imagination and there is probably a possibility that could happen. And that's why I like this segment because some people have stories, man, that they told me, and it's it's freaky. They're freaky. Some fella told me that. He met one guy before. He only met him twice. He was a friend of a friend. He just said hello. That's all. And he used he he would have this recurring dream just every night. And he had it for about a week or two. And it was that the fella he was at the guy's funeral, and the reason why he died is because he died in his sleep. Now this guy is a stand-up comedian, and I had him on uh, Rain Glenn. Uh, I don't know what episode it is, but guys, if you want to go check that out, and um, he's the type. He's he's not the type of guy to bullshit. Um, or lied to you, like he'd, he'd tell you, no, it was straight if you didn't believe it. But he used to have this recurring dream of the guy dying, uh, and they'd be at his funeral. But the reason he died, he died in his sleep, as I said. And one night, he woke up, and he got a phone call, and he said, uh, they were talking to his mates, and he said, my mate just died. And he goes, what do you mean? And he goes, do you remember the guy that he opened? He goes, oh, yeah, 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 I met him twice. And he goes, yeah, well, he died, died in his sleep there, just a few, like about two hours ago. He died in his sleep. And he was like, I don't know how to explain it, but he dreamt of that, of him going to his funeral and the fella dying in his sleep. And it was scary. Like the way he was telling me, I was like, oh my God, that's creepy. Like it's fucked up. But that is I, insane. yeah, that's a bit mad. Like so. things, often things within our own minds mm -hmm. that we can't explain with our dreams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's fucking, it's, it's, it's fucked up. But um, I also want to ask you this question as well. I'm starting to ask uh, our filmmakers as well this question. Between these three films, um, what one would be your favorite? Um, the Snapper, The Van, or The Commitments? Um, the Commitments is the most fun out of the three. Everybody said that. There's only one person that said the, the Van so far yet. So this, The Commitments is winning. And what, what's the reason they Good. like The Commitments? Um... 
there's a lot of characters in it. They're all kind of fun. It's a funny movie. Oh, and there's music in it as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, you know, like a homegrown band mm -hmm. trying to make waves. I mean, who among us can't relate to that? Yeah, that's true. I think it's so good. Irish films are so good because we can relate to them on so many levels. Us as Irish people. Um, yeah where I grew up. Um, it's not like watching a movie that was made in Hollywood, which is basically on the other side of the world. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Well, us that, uh, in the snapper, um, oh, sorry, the van where they're, they're dealing with customer, they were dealing with a customer, uh, a girl with a lot of children. He goes, are they yours? He goes, Jesus, no, that one's mine. I wouldn't be able for all of them. And, uh, turns around and, uh, the guy comes up on his bike and he goes, I want my money back. I'll look at this or so. And he goes, what is that? And he goes, it's a nappy. And he goes, is it? Ah, oh, Jason, that he goes, is it a used one? Is it? And he goes, no. And he goes, well, sure. Well, that's grand, isn't it? That's such <laughs> Irish humor. That's such Irish humor. And he goes, come here. I'll give you, he goes, oh, what about, I'll give you our money back and a can of Coke. That's what he said. That's such Irish fucking humor. We're, we're literally so like, ah, fuck it. Be grand. And the fella's like, oh, I have the evidence. And he goes, shove the evidence up your hole. And he goes, start that van up or get one off. Like, and it's, it's, fucking, it's fucking crazy. I, I love Irish films uh, because you can relate to them so much. We know someone. In every Irish film, we know people like that. We know the nosy neighbors. You get me? We know the, oh. the, the snapper. We know the girl that got uh, accidentally pregnant. Do you get me? She got accidentally pregnant. She did from a night out drinking. Um, you know the lads that take the piss out of the girl for for a we all the local them. art types. Yeah, yeah, like we we know um, we know all that. Like, but um, yeah, for the likes of that. But man, before we go, I want to ask: Is there anything you want me to leave down to the link uh, in the description below, like your Instagram or anything? No, no, no okay, uh, not at all. Not that I don't really do no. social media. No. You're a fourth person. They put her a fourth person. Yeah. Is there anything every, at all that you were involved in that I can put down the link to below? Um, <laughs> no? I want to say something. Yeah. What was I involved in? Um, not really. No, I've never, not really got anything to plug for the time being. That's all right. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, it's all right. I leave, I leave all my links down in the description below to me, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'm on Snapchat now, so... Uh, Snapchat is podcast underscore all right. Um, I set up just for you guys so you can see behind the scenes and all when I'm setting stuff up or if I have any news or updates, please go check that out because I won't be doing it on YouTube um, on the community's website. I think it's on my social media. You'll get all the background and so, so please follow me on that. Um, but yeah, man, thanks very much for coming on and doing this because I need guests and you, you came up and I had no bloody guests. So uh, I really appreciate it. We can have you back on soon. Uh, hopefully in I'll be August. here, bro. Hopefully in August, um, or even July or August or so, because I'm trying to get about a hundred um, fans and I'm uh, fans, a uh, hundred uh, guests, and then I'm, I'm trying to get them like different every time. So um, I, I want to see how long I can do that for up to a hundred. Um, but yeah, when when we finally reach a hundred, have you back on? We'll talk more and so. And I'll do a deep dive on. If, do you do you have Instagram and stuff like that, or do you not just use it? Um, no, I'm not even on Instagram. No. Never bothered with it. Yeah, I'm, Wait, sort I'm, gonna, of, I'm gonna have to take a deep oh. dive on yourself and find out information and then next time we do we'll bring it up. Um, I'm a private detective. Yeah, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm really good at it. Um so because the amount of sticky notes I had going around this bloody um computer screen for our people and um, that I was able to look up and stuff and they were even like, What the fuck? How'd you know that? And I'm like, Listen, buddy. I fucking deep dive and I was and I said as I said at the start with you anything you don't want me to mention I'll cut it out but I said it to them and uh, it, it was good and um, but yeah guys thanks so much for watching this is another episode of the all right podcast and remember it's not the best podcast but it's not the worst podcast it's just an all right, all right podcast. podcast lovely you're a fucking man everybody that does that is fucking like right they're fucking great like they they do with me um yeah, so guys, thanks for watching, man. Thanks again for coming on and being a guest. And uh, guys, we'll oh, check oh. you later.